What is up everyone? How you doing? So, new day, new fun stuff going on. I'm really excited. We got the exhaust fully finished up on the E36. If you didn't see those videos, go check them out. It's the last two. And now we're gonna bring the E36 back to the shop, take it all back apart, paint it up, put it all back together, and we're gonna have one gangster ass E36. And uh, I just, I couldn't be more excited for it. And on top of that, we got some pretty cool pieces for Nissan today that I'm, I'm really, really stoked on. And I uh, can't wait for you guys to see them, so. So for you guys who haven't somehow seen the exhaust already, go watch the last two videos. Here's a sneak peek of it. Mm, see, you guys know. This came out so freaking beautiful. I'm so happy about it. So I'm gonna take it off the car right now. Uh, I don't even wanna risk damaging it, putting it on the trailer, because the car is still kind of low, and I anticipate raising this car up, giving it more meaty fitment, because I want this car to grip. I want this to be, I want this thing to be a streeter. Back to my shop. Well, Justin, you did an amazing job. Well, thank you. It's up to me now to make the car look as, the rest of it look as good as that downpipe. It so. will, it will. It's thank gonna you. be a ripper. It's gonna be a ripper. Yeah, I can't wait. Me neither. The sun's in my eyes. <laughs> they look beautiful. Majestic. <laughs> One dude, no steering shaft. What can go wrong? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> All right, so even though I love staring at this thing like way, way, way too much, uh, it's gotta come out, because we're gonna paint the bay. We're gonna paint the bay because we're gonna paint the car eventually, and I wanna make sure that it's just one and done. You know, the whole do it once, do it right thing. We try to aim for that here. So uh, yeah, let's shut up and get this thing the heck out of there. All right, this thing's just a boring old shell once again. Got the engine yanked out. So now there isn't much I need to do on the drivetrain. This was freshly rebuilt or freshly regasket and everything. So that's good to go. I'm probably gonna paint this something else and just reroute a few things that I'm not happy with. And then for the engine bay, it's pretty simple to begin with. So I don't feel the need to do any like crazy bay shave. We'll probably get rid of a few brackets. Uh, I'm gonna do an ABS delete and um, then we're just gonna scuff and spray it. It's easy as that, and then this thing can go right the heck in and we can start making some horse puppies. So, so now it's time to work on the sauna for tonight. So what we're doing tonight is pretty cool. It's gonna tie the whole front together and I've been excited for it for weeks. But I'm gonna wait till Brian gets off of work to show you guys all about this. What's up, B-Hall? What's going on, Jimmy Oaks? How you doing, man? Did you, uh, did you already do the video intro or is this it? No, I filmed this whole thing right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So since B-Hall's here, we can finally explain what's going on. So as you guys could see, there's a big asshole on my strut tower. Hell yeah, it looks like that thing got plowed. <laughs> Alrighty then. So as you guys know, since we fully S13 converted the front ends, uh, we have to convert the strut towers to accept an S13 coilover. Now, a lot of guys had the idea of taking a Civic top hat and putting on a S13 coil, which it, you could do that, but there's a couple things wrong with it. One, you have no camber adjustment, which kind of sucks, and two, it's in the completely wrong position, more importantly. So what we have to do is basically cut the whole entire thing out and replace it with a piece that has a strut top that not only accepts an S13 coilover, but accepts it in the correct position, which is somewhere around here. Yeah, so the other day, uh, Jimmy and I cut this hole real quick, and then we measured a million. Threw the, threw the stock suspension up in there, and we measured the angle of the strut to get our caster in the location that we're gonna want it. And we came up with a solution that I think worked out really, really well. Should we show them? Show them. All right. Check it out. Our new strut tower top. So a buddy of mine uh, has a plasma CNC and he cut out a couple of plates and uh, I brought him to work earlier today. I put some uh, primer on the back side of this one and on the front of that one and I resistance spot welded them together. So this thing is crazy strong. We could probably take this thing off with some serious jumps. <laughs> I, okay, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Do some but drag yeah. race, some wheelies. 
Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> well, this thing's just badass looking. So this is the position that we need our coilover in after measuring a gazillion and a half times. So instead of making it accepting the three bolt top that most S13 coils have, we basically cut out the middleman there and have it so our coilover camber plate actually bolts directly to the tower. Right, exactly. Fully Having full camber adjustment in the strut tower itself is like, way better, right? Basically what we have to do today is cut out a hole big enough to accept this plate, weld it in, reinforce it, and we can bolt up our S13 coilover and have a full S13 suspension in the front of a Honda Civic. Oh my God, I can't wait. That's like, you know what is crazy about that though? Is once this is done, I'm going to be so gassed up yeah, to you, chop dude. the rear. <laughs> because once the rear shut tower is done, like, that means we can put this thing on the ground. Which is a crazy thought. I mean, we're not gonna drive around, but I just wanna see it on the ground. Right? Oh. All right, well, let's get to work, all right? Yeah, let's do it. It's a pretty solid uh, hammer and dolly setup you got there, kid. <laughs> all right, so the strut tower is anything but flat. Uh, it's the weirdest shape ever. And so we we're trying to, our goal was to cut it to give us a nice plane as best as we could. And now Brian's making up for the difference. All right, so we got it cleaned up, everything's prepped, uh, everything's flat, everything's positioned, and it, it sh this should work out. So we're gonna tack into place, and Michelle has just a few more corners on it, and then weld her up. Fire, 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 right there, right there. <laughs> nice. Fire! Good job. Yeah. Uh, uh, paper towels will bad. get you every <laughs> single time. Ah, paper right. towels will get Fucking you every time. The worst. <laughs> the rookie mistake. All right, so Brian's hitting all the low points on the Civic chassis just so we have a nice tight gap between the metal of the Civic and our new plate so the weld comes out nice and nice. And nice. Yeah, I mean, it's actually working out really well. I had like at least an eighth inch gap over here. And uh, I mean, it's it's pretty perfectly flush now. We'll be able to weld all the way around the bottom and then all the way around the top. And that should Double be- Double penetration, boys. I didn't, I didn't think we yeah. had to take it there, but- yeah. uh, <laughs> We went there. No, yeah, it was you, man. Mm. You, it was, you were the guy who went there. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you got this one? Yeah, I got it. All right. <laughs> I see you went with the fat tag technique there, boy. I'm tired, but it's in there. It's solid. Woo! Oh, sh oh, she's melted. You still gotta weld the bottom. Oh well, yeah, that's the fun one. Dude, this thing is sick. It integrated so well, like the arches and everything. This really flows well with the factory body lines and tower. Yeah, I mean, if you, if we seam sealed this, people would be like, wow, what a weird looking camera plate. You know? <laughs> yeah, right? But I mean, this almost looks more normal than this thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? God damn it, Civic. No, I love that. That's so cool. And the, the top bracing piece was a really nice touch, too. You gonna make me weld the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> it should. All right. <laughs> All right, you ready to bolt this coil up or what? I think we're both dying to see it. Yep, all cleaned up, ready to go. <laughs> All right, so we still have to extend the lower control arm on this thing like literally almost three inches. Is this gonna have positive camber? So right it's now? gonna look ridiculous because it, it's gonna have either it's probably gonna have positive camber. We could say we bolted up that S13 suspension fully tonight. Do you have bolts? I got bolts here. Where? In my pocket. Oh, she fits like a glove. Ooh. Yeah, we're definitely got positive camber right now. So we're, we maxed out the camber plate. We still got positive camber. All right, it's bolted up. We officially have a full S13 bolt up on the driver's side. Not only are we gonna have a really wide front track width, uh, we're also gonna be a longer wheelbase than S13. So this thing should feel pretty planted and swing pretty nice. Yeah, I can't, I honestly can't wait. It's, it, you think that this is a short car, but I think in like relative It's longer terms, than S14, yeah. which is crazy. So like this thing might potentially be a great drift car, which is kind of badass to think about. 
I guess we're going to have to find out. I mean, I'm sure we're going to come into other problems and we're going to have to find other solutions for those problems. But until then, I, we're going to keep dreaming. <laughs> All right, so I took out the front lower controller right here. We just have a stock S13 lower. And Jesus. I got the extension plates by Villains right here, and we have a 40 mil and we have a 25 mil. We're actually going to have to weld these together and make it a total of 65 millimeters long, and that should give us a perfect amount of room to clear the factory frame rails with a 16 inch wheel for the Honda Civic. So. So this is a factory steering stop. Definitely get rid of that. So when you're picking a spot to extend these, make sure it's after all the suspension components. You can see right here on the caster arm, right past it. And you wanna make sure it's right before this arch where the metal actually starts to become a different shape. So then our extension pieces will actually fit in there perfectly. So I would say probably about an inch from the top pole is perfect. Eh. Inch? Inch. Yeah, it's an inch. <laughs> So we got factory 240, and then we got Civic converted to 240. <laughs> that looks ridiculous. But uh, a little bit of racing, and we should be good to go. Oh yeah, this thing looks legit. That'll give us the room that we need. Ooh. That freaking flaming thing away from me. Yeah, this thing's really hot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Feel it from here. Ready? Ha! Ooh, I like that camber. Ha! <laughs> so I, so when I'm in the top hats, I was accounting for it to have seven degrees of camber at full camber plate, just like an S13 would when you extend it 40 mils. So, this is gonna have a drift fitment. I think it's gonna be pretty dope. Let's get a uh, let's get a wheel face. We could use a wheel face as a template. So obviously, we don't have much room between uh, the wheel and the fender, but we do have some room. And I have a fender roller, and we could roll the shit out of these fenders. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of wheel hitting the frame rail, uh, even though we just have the face, we can get a pretty good idea about how much more room we now have. This is probably max angle this car will ever see. And as you could see, we have plenty of room now to clear the frame rail. We might have to massage it a little bit right here, but before we were actually whacking the entire rail. So I think we're, uh, I think we're in luck here. Oh, that's so badass. So the one thing we we're really worried about when it comes to the top hat is actually the caster. Now caster is going to affect your self steer, which is basically how easily the wheel comes back to you when you go into a transition or into a turn and drifting, right? Right. That's the easiest way to put it. So with no self steer, it's really difficult to drift. You have to walk your wheel back with too much self steer, you can lose control pretty easily. So it's pretty important. So with S chassis, usually around seven degrees is like the go-to number. So we were aiming for seven degrees on this thing in terms of mocking up, laying everything down and after everything that could have gone wrong. Seven degrees, exactly. And that's awesome. I'd even adjust the lower uh, caster arm like we could, but I wanted seven degrees of caster with the wheel in the center of the wheel arch so it looks, you know, right at home. And we got it, so. I don't know if that's luck, skill, or a little bit of bull, but we managed to do it and I'm pretty pumped about it. That's planned luck. Planned luck. So we got one side completely finished, which is sick. Now we can do the other side off camera, bang it out really quick, and we have our complete front end, which is, I still have to throw tie rods in, but I got those, I'll do it later. But there you go, guys. Now we officially have a front S13 converted Civic, or whatever way of saying that. <laughs> Disregard this shitty fitment too. Uh, we made these for BC top hats. These are like CX racing mocked up. These are like CX racing coilovers that we're just using for mock up. This is so sweet. All right, but awesome success for today. I'm super happy with all our progress and I hope you guys are stoked for us too because look at this, it's so freaking cool. But you guys know the deal, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content and be. We will see you tomorrow, <laughs> day night.